we have a lovely collection of um, uh, of slides um, uh, that basically provide you with uh, with an atlas of images of real human tissues and in the earlier footage that we took um, you will have some examples on the screen of images um, showing what that actually looks like under the microscope. Uh, we also have uh, stashed away here in various places lots of analytical equipment uh, for doing simple chemistry um, for chemical analyses um, of the sorts of molecules that are important to um, to measure in the human body, for example. Um, and some of that equipment is also used for measurements in ecosystems um, for uh, field work. We're walking through some sort of more support lab environments. We have some incubators here in fridges and freezers. That's not terribly exciting. Hand washing stations, hand hygiene after being in the lab is a good thing. Here is our friend. I don't know whether he has a name, but this is uh, this girl was an African elephant. And um, we will now uh, move into one of the sort of biomedically orientated research labs. So here, what do we have? We have a general workstation for um, you know, weighing out things and um, adjusting buffer conditions and so on. That's not terribly exciting. We have general work areas for molecular biology, um, and this is something that you'd see in, in many biomedical laboratories. We have, I, do you remember the, the bit about making tissue slices and so on? If you want to do that from scratch, there's a device here that chills your tissue samples to allow uh, cold sections to be cut for, micros for microscopy, and that's important for, for visualizing not just the general structures that you've seen on the teaching slides, but actually to detect particular immune markers in tissues and, and figuring out where they are found in, uh, in various tissues. Um, if you follow me to this end of the lab, you will see a couple of really exciting things. Here is um, a bunch of equipment which is used um, by colleagues mostly in nutrition and health. Um, Professor Adele Costabile but what you can see here is a system in which we actually model the digestive functions of the human gut and the influence of, um, of the gut flora, the microbiome, as it is now called, on processes of digestion. So we have little glass tubes um, that illustrate, um, that basically are set up to, to mimic the conditions in the stomach and in the small and in the large intestine um, for studies of this sort. And here we have an instrument called a flow cytometer, and this is sort of a workhorse instrument for hematology studies uh, that you can find in biomedical science labs as well as in research labs. And this is a, a workhorse for studying up to eight different molecular markers at the same time uh, in, uh, in biological samples like blood or cultured cell lines. Um, and so it's very versatile. It's also very good for quantitative analysis. Uh, so you can figure out things. So I, I use this, for example, to study um, uh, what happens to the uh, to certain immune markers in cells that have been cell cultures that have been treated with vitamin D um, as a way to investigate what vitamin D might be doing in disease mechanisms in autoimmune disease, where it seems to have some sort of benefits to maintain a good vitamin D status. Um, this is just a fume cupboard uh, for certain chemical reactions that are important in, um, in um, uh, analyzing certain classes of molecules in a technique that you may see in a minute uh, coming up. Um, so this is a place for working with volatile, nasties, um, organic uh, molecules uh, when you're preparing um, samples for certain kinds of analytics. Um, and this is what we are pleased to call our omics lab. That's perhaps a little bit grand, uh, but one of the pieces of kit that might be quite photogenic, just mind the gas bottle here, is this. Um, and this is, uh, this is called a, a liquid chromatograph mass spectrometer. And it is, it's set up with two mass detectors that sit back to back. So you can take a molecule, evaporate it in a vacuum, 
give it a charge, accelerate it through these detectors, and you can pick up the intact mass first, and then you can blow it to smithereens, and then put it into the second mass detector to analyze the fragments. And it's a really good way of, um, of uh, having a very specific and very quantitative way of measuring the amounts of lots of different um, analytes at the same time. Now, when I say at the same time, it also has these little um, columns um, through which the samples get separated first before they get um, uh, before they get analyzed in the mass analyzers. So there are several different levels of resolving different molecules, and it's very good for dissecting very complicated biological mixtures and measuring all sorts of things about them. <laughs>